Yep, you guessed it. We're talking about driver's daily logs. When do I need to fill this out? Every time you drive a rolling rock truck. What are you going to do with those? You're going to keep seven previous days yellow copies in your log book, and you're going to turn in the white copies at the end of the week with your time card. Remember to always keep the seven previous days of logs in your log book. Rolling Rock Construction provides drivers with a driver's daily log. If you do not have one, please get in contact with the office. They can also be purchased at any truck stop. On the front cover, we're going to put Rolling Rock Construction, that's the carrier, the start and end dates, and then please put your name. For this example, I'm going to pick up a truck on Sunday and head to Sierraville to do some flagging. In the information at the top, the carrier is Rolling Rock Construction, and the main office address is 5527 Truck Village Drive, and that's in Mount Shasta. The home terminal is where you leave at the beginning of your day. I am leaving from the Mount Shasta yard. I am driving truck 141 and towing message board 25. At the bottom, I put where I'm leaving from. You're going to be using this grid every time you change your status throughout the day. Here's what that looks like. I am off duty until I get to the yard to pick up the truck. So I change of status. So I'm going on duty when I get to the yard. First thing I do when I get in my truck, I'm going to perform a pre-trip inspection. We have two parts. You're going to do a daily vehicle inspection report, known as a DVIR, and you're going to check your truck for the supplies and equipments you need for the job you are going down to. Any time that you are on duty but not driving, you need to account for that time. So for the time that I was doing the pre-trip inspection between 2.30 and 3, it would look like this. I'm going to change my status from on duty to driving. And then I make my way down the road where I change my status again when I check into the hotel. And then I am off duty for the rest of the night. On the right hand side, I'm going to calculate the hours for each type of status. And it should add up to 24. In the upper left, you'll notice two boxes. The one on the right is for the total mileage that's put on the truck. The box on the left is for the amount of miles that you drove. If you shared this responsibility with another driver, then the total mileage you drove and the total mileage your partner drove should add up to the total mileage today. In the bottom where it says two, we're going to put the furthest distance we drove from where we started. In this case, it's at the hotel in Gray Eagle. And don't forget to sign it. Monday through Thursday, home is going to be the hotel address. Since I am starting and ending my day at the same address, and I'm staying within a 100-mile radius, I can just write local. No need to mess with the grid. So I put my mileage, and I sign it. Before we get to Friday and working and then driving home, we need to talk about the hours of service. The law requires that you have a minimum of eight consecutive off-duty hours prior to going back on duty if you're going to drive. For example, if you get off duty at 8 p.m., if you're going to drive in the following shift, eight hours later is 4 a.m., you cannot go back on duty until 4 a.m. After your eight consecutive off-duty hours and you go back on duty, the clock starts ticking. At 16 hours after you start, you cannot drive, regardless if you're still on duty. For example, you go on duty at 5 a.m., 16 hours is 9 p.m. You cannot drive after 9 p.m. This may affect our drive home. The law further states that we can only drive 12 hours once that clock starts. This means that within that 16 hours, you cannot drive more than 12 hours, which means four of those 16 hours needs to be a combination of off-duty and on-duty not driving. You must stay compliant with the hours of service. Let's see how that affects Friday. 
I've marked off 16 hours with that yellow bar. I have a plan in mind for how I'm going to spend those 16 hours. Here are a few things to consider. We have a pre-trip inspection, should take about 15 minutes. We have a half an hour drive to the job site and it'll take us four and a half hours to get home. And then lastly, we have our uh, about 15 minute post-trip cleanup. Since the post-trip cleanup is after I finish driving, we don't need to worry about that. This is how it fits in with the required hours of service. Out of that 16, I've already spent five. And I am well within that 12 hour maximum drive time. All right, start my day at five o'clock, pre-trip inspection. I drive to Sierraville for the job. Spend the next hours flagging. I get on the road, drive to Susanville where we have dinner. I can finish up my drive. This is where I run into trouble. My 16 hours was over at 9 o'clock, so I have this half an hour where I've gone over my time limit. I need to reevaluate my plan and see where I can cut some time. I've been showing up a little bit early every day, but not today. I am not sleeping in Bernie. The rest of my day looks the same. Another place I can cut some time out is during dinner. Finish my drive home. We can see I am well within those 16 hours. Let's go ahead and review real quick. You must fill out a driver's log every time you drive an R&R &R truck. You're going to reestablish a home terminal when you leave from a different location to start your day. If you leave and return to the same location, as long as you stay within a 100 mile radius, you can write local instead of filling out the grid. Make sure you keep the seven previous day yellow copies in your logbook. Turn in the original white copies to the office with your time card.